Hello, I'm Mike Russos, a principal software engineer on the .NET customer engagement team. And in this series of videos, we're going to look at the end-to-end -end process for upgrading from .NET Framework to .NET 7. Now, as we walk through this, there will be a number of steps we want to address to understand the total process of upgrading from the very beginnings where we prepare and plan for the upgrade all the way through testing and deploying. And we'll make sure that the videos in this series cover each of these steps in detail so that you can feel comfortable taking your own applications and upgrading them to the latest versions of .NET. We'll start with the preparation phase. Now, this is important because when we talk about upgrading from .NET Framework to .NET 7, if someone were to ask me, how long will this take? How much effort is it? I couldn't even give an answer because that might vary from a couple of days for simple Windows desktop applications or console apps or class libraries to many months for very complex ASP.NET web solutions that need to be upgraded to ASP.NET Core or anywhere in between. The investment that's needed and the work that needs to be done varies dramatically depending on the solution that you're working with. So you want to start by understanding what work lies ahead and what work you can do to make the upgrade process as painless as possible. As part of this, we're going to be looking at the dependencies that the solution has because that's the number one contributor to the amount of work you need to do and the details of that work when you get to the upgrade steps. We'll look at the .NET APIs that the solution depends on since uh, even though .NET 7 supports most .NET APIs that .NET Framework supported, there are still a few feature areas where APIs are missing. We'll look at third-party dependencies that your solution depends on, whether that's some sort of a DLL or NuGet package or something else. We'll look at project-to-project -project dependencies within the solution so that we can reason about how the projects depend on one another and how they need to upgrade together. And we'll also talk about the programming model that's used and the type of project it is, since there will be different uh, pitfalls to look out for and different best patterns and best practices, depending on whether we're upgrading a, a console application, a Windows desktop app, like a WPF or WinForms application, an ASP.NET app, a WCF app, a Xamarin application, a class library, or something else. Each of those will have their own unique characteristics that we want to prepare for. Also, at this point in the upgrade process, it's appropriate to think about which platform you're going to target. Because when we upgrade to the latest version of .NET, that might mean the current short-term support release, currently .NET 7, so that we have access to the latest features and the latest performance improvements. Or it could mean upgrading to the latest long-term support release. In this case, it would be .NET 6, eventually .NET 8, where we're going to have the longest amount of support from Microsoft on that target platform. If you have a class library that needs to be uh, referenced by both .NET and .NET Framework callers, you might want to consider upgrading to .NET Standard 2.0 for maximum portability. And finally, we'll discuss the fact that for some applications, Staying on .NET Framework is perfectly fine. I do want to be clear that even though there are many advantages to upgrading to .NET 6, .NET 7, and eventually .NET 8, and we're going to talk about all of those, .NET Framework continues to be supported and will be supported indefinitely by Microsoft. So if you have an application that's working well today on .NET Framework, there's no requirement to upgrade it. And we'll talk about when it would make sense to upgrade or, or not. Finally, as part of looking at all those dependencies, looking at where we're going to upgrade to, we'll think about what order projects need to be upgraded. You might have a solution with many projects and need to think about which of those projects need to be upgraded first, which need to be upgraded later, and how you want to order those. After we've done that preparation stage, then we'll move on to upgrading the project file itself. We'll start by going from the old style CS proj up to the new SDK style projects that are smaller, more human readable, and easier to work with. We will also, at this point, be looking at those NuGet references we had and make sure that they're up to date as well with versions of the packages that are going to work for your new target, whether that's .NET Standard, .NET 6, or .NET 7. As we update the project file, we'll also need to make a very important decision about how we're going to upgrade to the latest version of .NET. We will decide whether we're going to upgrade in place by changing the existing project file, or if we're going to do an incremental side-by-side -side upgrade where we create a new project file 
for targeting the new platform and then move code over a little bit at a time. Both of those have their advantages. They both have their place. And so we'll talk about how we can decide between them and how tooling like Upgrade Assistant and other tools that we'll be using in this series can help us with each of those approaches. Then we'll get into the bulk of the work and what most people think of when they think about upgrading to .NET 7. We'll get into upgrading the source code itself. This will include your C Sharp and Visual Basic source. It will include config files, uh, as well as other assets like uh, views or um, app configuration or XAML files or uh, static content. All of these things we will need to take from the original project, make sure that they work in the new one. Along the way, like I said, we will have tools like the .NET Upgrade Assistant that can help us with this, uh, but there'll always be some amount of manual work, and we'll talk about how to best use the tools and combine them with manual efforts to end up with a project that works well at the end of the day on the new version of .NET. We'll also talk about some cross-cutting concerns like auth, maybe some logging, some perf considerations, and we'll talk about how whether you're upgrading in place or side-by-side changes the way that you upgrade your source, since there are some scenarios where upgrading a large class library or a web application, you might actually have both the old and new project live and deployed simultaneously for a period while you're going through the process of migrating so that you can uh, go into production even before you've completed the entire migration and just be able to move a piece at a time and make the whole process more approachable. Finally, we will uh, complete this work by testing our application and deploying it. And this is important because people sometimes think once the, the solution builds, they're done. But the fact is there are differences between .NET Framework and .NET 7 that don't show up until runtime. There are differences that come up only if you decide to retarget to say Linux instead of running on Windows. And so we'll talk about how you can choose uh, where to deploy and how to test to make sure that your application is going to work on the new platform in the new environment. We'll talk also about some of these deployment options that come with upgrading to .NET 7, where you can choose to deploy either as a self-contained application or as a framework dependent application. You can even deploy as a single file exe so that there's just one binary you need to ship to your users for them to run your app. We'll also look a little bit about what it what it looks like to take uh, an ASP.NET Core application after you've migrated it and deploy it up into Azure. So as we go through this, we want to make sure that you see all of these steps happening in these videos. So I have a demo application. It's um, called eShop. It's a common sample. You may have seen it in some other Microsoft uh, talks and demos. It's a simple e-commerce application. And at the beginning of this video series, it is an ASP.NET MVC app running on .NET Framework. Over the course of these videos, we're gonna take this demo app, we're gonna go through this process, we're gonna use tools like Upgrade Assistant, like .NET Upgrade Planner, and we're going to uh, completely upgrade it from ASP.NET on .NET Framework to ASP.NET Core on .NET 7, making sure that every change we have to make happens in one of these videos. So that by the time we get to the end of the series, this runs completely on ASP.NET Core uh, and on .NET 7, and you've been able to see the entire journey. I will point out, if you've seen the eShop demo before, I have a slightly modified version of it that I've shared here on GitHub because I wanted to add a couple additional features that make the upgrade more interesting. I've added the ability for users to log in, and I've added some additional session states so that we can demonstrate how some of our tools that we're going to talk about, like the system web adapters, allow you to seamlessly upgrade from ASP.NET up to ASP.NET Core, even when you're using some of these features like session or auth that sometimes complicate an upgrade. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, with the next video, we'll start talking about why we would upgrade, and then we'll get into the planning and the migration of that eShop app. Uh, I'll see you there.